Well, uh, welcome to another uh, online lecture on uh, procurement and uh, global sourcing. Uh, this particular lecture talks about uh, tools and techniques that we use uh, in uh, supply management um, to enhance value of the firm. Um, we're going to go through several of the tools that might be handy um, uh, in, in your careers as well. But let me set the stage primarily uh, by using a uh, uh, an executive briefing that we typically use in the class. Um, this one comes from Supply Chain Brain um, and it's an interview uh, with um, uh, one of the executives at uh, Gartner. So I uh, hope you enjoy it and we'll be uh, um, starting up uh, right after um, this uh, presentation. The function of procurement should be about more than just getting the lowest price from your organization. How do you get real, quantifiable value from procurement? That's the topic of my conversation today with Mickey North Rizzo, Research Director with Gartner. Mickey, welcome to the program. Thanks so much. It's, it's always good to have you back. Thank you. So what about this issue of really getting real value? What is real value in, the terms, of, uh, in terms of procurement? It's really about delivering shareholder value. And when you get down to it, it's really about looking and improving your overall gross margins. It's helping lower your overall cost of goods sold. It's making a difference in working capital, lowering your inventory values, looking for shorter order to cash cycle times, helping your suppliers bring the real product into the market on time so you can be a success in a given and new market and your company is thriving and surviving. So the point is, it has to make a difference that is seen in the numbers, makes a major impact, and allows your company to grow and bring in more revenue by reducing, yes, the overall cost to some of the points that procurement has looked at for years and years, but it's tying it back into those overall numbers. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to talk about bottom line value, very often people think of that as just the lowest price. Right. Get me the lowest price, and next year get me an even lower price. That's exactly But it. you're talking about something that goes deeper than that. You're talking about kind of a game-changing approach Absolutely. to procurement. So could you be a little more specific about what that entails other than just getting the best price? There's another excerpt to this that I wanted you to, to see. She particularly talks about some tools and the techniques. So let's listen to this part services internally, getting some additional help in making that. So what are the capabilities within the organization? How do you augment that and add uh, significantly more value? Another very significant point uh, is focusing on the numbers. So yes, it is about that gross margin and the cost of goods sold, but what are the numbers that you're actually bringing in? What is it that you're, at, you're really delivering the value on? Are you lowering inventory numbers? Are you shorter, shortening the order to cash cycle time? When you bring down those costs, are they making a difference in the margins? Is it just on new products? Is it on current products? And what do you do with end-of-life products where you have to make those warranty trade-offs and decisions around the cost and the value of perhaps carrying the inventory just to satisfy end-of-life products? And then the last area that we're seeing is around technology. Some of the best companies out there are still getting 10 and 15 percent, in many cases low-hanging fruit, or, excuse me, around some of the sourcing uh, segments that they're looking at, the categories and that, that they're trying to take costs out. When they add in demand planning techniques, they can even get more value. We see those using advanced technologies around optimization techniques and trying different theories and even into predictive analytics, that they're actually doing two things there. They're taking out an additional 10 to 12 percent just in the cost by using some of those techniques. And further to that, they're able to actually predict where those suppliers are going to be in the future so that it helps them from the original sourcing exercise to get on to the next avenue. So it really is about bringing these six areas together, understanding that they're all integrated, and they do deliver real quantity. Okay, well, um, so really what she's talking about is bringing value to the organization, and that's what this chapter is about. We're going to talk about some of the tools that we use to provide value. And the first one I'm going to be talking about in this part of the lecture and then another recording will follow uh, is value analysis and value engineering. And um, we'll also get into quantity discount analysis. Value analysis um, and value engineering have been around for some time. Um, they both involve examining elements of components assembly and end products uh, to make sure that it really meets the intended function, no more and no less, alongside with total cost, um, meaning that we don't want to pay too much for something when we don't want to make sure we want to make sure that it's not um, less than what uh, we're hoping to get from it. So really, value is uh, a combination of function and um, cost. Uh, function divided by cost provides us with the value. Now. 
who is involved in value uh, analysis and value engineering. Typically, the executive management gets involved. Suppliers, of course, get involved because they provide the components. There's supply management, folks internally that get involved. And much of the value engineering side gets uh, to be uh, on the shoulders of design engineers, and so they get involved. On the value analysis side, marketing certainly gets involved, as well as the value engineering side. But um, particularly when it comes to uh, making the items, production and industrial process engineering um, have to, to be involved. The whole idea here is, again, looking at each of the components, uh, looking at each piece and the entire system of what we're selling to the uh, uh, to the end consumer um, and make sure that it actually does provide a um, uh, value. Um, so how do we do this? Um, um, or how do we test for it? Um, does the uh, product contribute value to our customers, right? So in other words, do we have the, the necessary buttons on a cell phone, no more and no less? And um, does the uh, number of uh, radio stations that uh, are in, in the car essentially meet the expectation of the, the consumer? Is the engine or the differential or any other part providing too much and that the customer is not necessarily needing or um, expecting? Similarly, with the cost of the final product, um, is it proportionate to its usefulness? Are we really getting $20,000 worth of a car, or should we be uh, more um, uh, more price-driven, uh, or perhaps the other way around? Um, and value engineering also looks at uh, ways where a product can become uh, uh, useful, right? So uh, moving away from cars and into adhesives, uh, oftentimes um, there are adhesives that have multiple purposes. Some of, uh, believe it or not, there are adhesives that are not so sticky and <laughs> they have very valuable uh, purposes for uh, things that we want to attach to one another, but for a short, short time frame. And do we need all the parts and features uh, for a particular uh, item? Uh, again, going back to the cell phones, for instance, um, is it necessary to have two cameras on the front and the back? And uh, are, is the customer willing to pay? Um, weight is a big deal when it comes to value, um, particularly because weight means that uh, uh, we have to pay for shipping and carry it around. Um, weighty items also lend themselves to more damage. So, um, you know, if we can reduce weight, we've uh, gained quite a bit. Um, and uh, uh, in terms of production method, there are um, are there other methods that we can use? Are there new equipment, for instance? Is there better ways to to go about it? So that essentially is the in terms of determining um, again lower cost standard uh, and and replacement of those um, can can that help us reduce uh, the the cost um, and in, in terms of process the proper um, use of proper tooling for instance so you can see a lot of focus on cost here but that's because we can easily measure it and that also allows us to uh, to determine um, how much um, uh, of analysis is necessary on the on the value part. Let me jump to um, another uh, important aspect and that is the process associated with value analysis and for this one um, what is necessary is of course we need to gather information right both from the customer side and from the supplier side to make sure that the components and the pricing and the um, a process um, to put them together are all lined up then we basically speculate or uh, provide different ideas if um, can we use a thinner um, um, bottle uh, to uh, um, make uh, or, or to carry a bottled water all the way through the process or are, are we um, lending ourselves to possibility of uh, damage um, because of uh, trucking and because of um, heat and whatever else. So then we analyze, we test, and then uh, there's a recommendation execution um, as, as the basis of it. And so the value analysis process is essentially an ongoing uh, event. Um, most of the time these days with new products, when they come out, um, there are some uh, associated additions, safety factors, etc., that are put in over time, be it Toyota Camrys or be it um, the next generation televisions, um, all of which go through value analysis and value engineering these days. 
And so the rest of the, uh, the, the, the next few slides actually talk about um, the different stages. For instance, um, in the gathering of information, um, we need to make sure that we fully understand what the product does for the customer. Um, and the reasons behind customers need for buying the product. Um, there's always primary and secondary functions to a product, right? We buy a car because we want to get from A to B, but a car also becomes, uh, um, has other purposes as well, right? And listen to music uh, inside the car, right? Um, enjoy scenery, whatever else it might be. Uh, same thing with the phone, same thing with the television, etc., etc. So what are those primary and secondary functions? And the reason we do that is because we certainly don't want to value engineer away any primary functions that the customer is particular about. And um, as a result, we end up with uh, detailed information about the product. Um, in the speculation stage, there's creative thinking, kind of what folks end up calling brainstorming and, and otherwise, but it's wide open and no idea is a bad one. And um, through brainstorming and idea creating techniques, we come up with uh, ways to um, think about how else a product can be made um, with better purpose, better value for the customer, um, and how we can improve um, the uh, the ideas. Um, for instance, I know for a fact that um, these days, um, you know, manufacturers have gone down the path of actually putting the fog lights in their front panel as part of the bumper. Well, you know, that actually is value engineering because you don't necessarily have to have separate parts and by having the fog lights inside the bumper, it makes assembly and um, uh, production much easier. So that I'm pretty sure that must have been part of some type of a, a value analysis um, stage. So then we analyze. The analyze stage, number three stage, to perform critical evaluation of the ideas to see which ones make sense. And of course, there's cost-benefit analysis to it um, and whether the idea is actually feasible or not. Um, and of course, you know, do the ideas uh, meet the original goals? If they're not helping the customer in enhancing uh, their uh, needs and therefore providing us with additional um, uh, uh, revenues and or reducing costs, then perhaps there is uh, no, no merit in pursuing it. So we're moving from general to more specific. We're moving from ideas that are more um, broad-based to specific applications of. And then, of course, there's the recommendation and execution stage where we figure out what are the priorities. If we want to make the cell phone better, uh, do we go after uh, making room for a bigger battery, for instance, um, by uh, reducing the size of the plastic that goes around the battery, for instance, in the, in the cell phone? Or do we go after a, uh, a perhaps a more efficient LED lighting for the front screen? So priorities, which ones are we better off in terms of cost and in terms of revenue from the customer. And then of course there's a proposal to management and uh, a lot of this requires uh, quite a bit of tenacity and the ability to see what could be possibly done. And so value engineers, um, which includes purchasing managers because they're heavily involved in this, does require uh, quite a bit of uh, willingness to make changes. But the bottom line effects, be they price or enhanced um, uh, production, uh, enhanced uh, sales, is quite prevalent, quite easily seen. And so it becomes, um, it becomes known by the executives quite, uh, quite easily. Um, and of course, then there's the, uh, you know, we got to figure out the timing and the budget requirements for it. So, um, I'm hitting right around 15 minutes. I'm going to pause, uh, this portion of the presentation and we'll follow up with, uh, another one, um, right after.